Thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Seven Days of Science. I really hope Scientists in France have tried to measure the happiness of dolphins in captivity in order to work out how they feel about it and what they look forward to the most. And as it turns out, what they look forward to the most is interacting with a familiar human. The study found that dolphins in captivity are pretty happy to be so, with the relieved owner of the dolphinarium saying that wild dolphins are happier in the wild and captive born dolphins are much happier in captivity. Remember the northern white rhino who died leaving his species without a male? Well, there's still hope for them yet, as new efforts to use cryopreserved genetic material could resurrect this species and perhaps save others from extinction. The main way this could be done is to artificially impregnate the southern white rhinos with a fertilised northern white rhino egg, probably from IVF. Good news for the Great Barrier Reef, kind of. The Great Barrier Reef, as many of you may know, is not currently in a great position, with marine heat waves causing large amounts of coral bleaching, which ends up killing it. Well, a new study published in Nature Geoscience and spanning over 10 years and multiple countries has shown the reef had dealt with death events in the past and still lived to tell the tale. At various times in the last 30,000 years, the reef has moved in sea and more inland as sea levels have risen and fallen. However, it also reveals that the reefs show high sensitivity to increased sediment and poor water quality, which is what it is facing now. In other news, scientists have found what they believe to be one of the best places for evidence of Martian life to exist. Iron-rich rocks near the location of what used to be lakes on the Martian surface are the best place to look for evidence of microbes once inhabiting the surface of Mars. This is an exciting step on the search for extraterrestrial life, and is probably where the next NASA Mars rover will conduct its research, as it searches for these tiny life forms. A new stem mammal was described this week being named Cephaliodon, and it provides some interesting information on the spread of the continents over time. Discovered in the Cretaceous rocks of Utah, this animal not only further supports the idea that mammalia forms were actually quite diverse at this time, but since it's the first group of its kind to be found in North America, it suggests that migration paths between continents were open for longer, meaning that Pangaea may have been around for a bit more time than we used to think. Researchers from University College Cork in Ireland had this week published a paper in which they described their discovery of fossilised dinosaur dandruff. The dandruff itself is very similar in structure to that of modern birds, and, like in our own species, it's composed of cells known as corneocytes. This discovery indicates that the dinosaurs they studied, such as Microraptor, Beopiosaurus, and Cynornithosaurus, shed their skin like today's birds, in flakes, and not in a single piece or large pieces like reptiles. When the asteroid that killed off the non-avian dinosaurs hit, it generated all kinds of destructive consequences. One of these, a new paper says, was the loss of forests all over the world, which caused birds adapted to living in trees to become extinct. This means that the ancestors of most of today's birds' lineages descended from ground-dwelling birds that managed to make it through the extinction event and lived on after, when the world temporarily lost its tree canopies and was instead dominated by ferns. Looks like we finally got some more Spinosaurus news, as a description of a toe claw belonging to a juvenile individual was very recently published. In this paper, hilariously named the smallest biggest theropod dinosaur, the fossil is said to possess traits unique to Spinosaurus, but is very small in size, so likely belonged to a very young animal. Once again, thank you very much for watching this week's episode of 7 Days of Science. I hope you thoroughly enjoy the week ahead and we'll see you on Sunday.